I'd like to welcome y'all to Secrets from the South. I'm your friend, Scotty Ray, along with my co-host, Terry. Now, you'll quickly catch on that we don't sound like the man on the 6 o'clock news. We talk a little slower, and we've got a southern drawl. But nonetheless, we've got a great podcast lined up just for you. We'll bring you some interesting stories. They're sometimes crazy and a little unbelievable. But it would be just plain impolite not to share them. So get yourself comfortable. Find some southern charm and a glass of iced tea and enjoy. Well, we're off into January. Before long, you're going to be listening to Lionel Richie and trying to find that special heart card for that someone special in your life. Trying to find that special song. Well, I was thinking about songs this week, and every now and then you hear a song and you go, I wonder what they were thinking when they wrote that. Well, this is my idea. Hang tight. We're going to examine some of those this week. I hope you'll enjoy this week's episode titled, The Story Behind the Song. Welcome back. As we start this new year, we thought we would go back and examine a few songs of the past, of what the meanings were. I'm doing good if I even know the lyrics, Scotty. I'm going to be honest. Unless it's a song that I sing all the time. And I'm going to be honest with you also. I have sang songs that I thought the lyrics was one thing. Right. And then you find it in print and you're almost embarrassed because you've been singing something else. Or you have your child call you out and go, what did you just sing? All right, let me say, and I don't know that I know the name of the song, but I'm trying to remember the line, and we don't have this in front of us anywhere, so this is from the hip. Okay. Remember Blinded by the Light? Yeah. Wake up like a deuce, and I don't think that's what it says. It's, isn't it, doesn't it say something else? Warmer in the night? Yeah. Uh, I need to look this up. Scotty, you were wrong. Well, I missed that one altogether. Uh, the line goes, yeah, he was blinded by the light. Oh, cut loose like a deuce, another runner in the night. And you've been singing it probably that way for years, right? Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, I, yeah. I got one. I'm going to tell him myself. So here's a song that's called I'd Really Love to See You Tonight. Oh, I know that. I'd love to, okay. love to see you Exactly. Tonight. And I hate to tell you this, but there's a part in it that said, I'm not talking about moving in. Okay. You know the line? I'm not talking about the. I'm not talking about moving in. Yeah, 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 it's, yeah. It's uh, and he talk. It's a chorus line. I mean, he says it re- repetitively. I used to think that he said, "I'm not talking about Meridian." <laughs> okay, I, I'm ashamed to say that. And <laughs> for you, you guys that don't know that, that's uh, uh, that's a city in Mississippi. And I used to think that is so cool. But the song is by. England Dan and John Ford Coley. It's a well-known song, right? Yeah. Been around forever. And I mean, I used to think that for years until I saw it in print. And I'm sure there's a lot of other folks that have found out years later. It was like, oops, I was singing that wrong. And Dan Seals, you know, later went on. England Dan went on to become a a country singer. Yeah. Uh, And I guess his biggest hit, you would have to say, was uh, Everything That Glitters Is Not Gold. Probably. Boy, that was a great song. But you know what, Scotty? Leave it up to you and I. We can screw up a song. Oh, full of it. But as we get to digging into these lists, there's a lot of songs that I had no idea what they were really talking about. Like, let's start out with the Eagles. Well, that's uh, let's just back up for a second. Okay. That's because you and I can't even get the lyrics right. You I think hung. you and I are going to understand the meaning? You know, there's an Alabama we're, song. We're setting, our, we're setting our sights way too high for us. We need to kind of lower that bar. I can't remember which which song was. Randy Owen wrote it, and uh, it, it's it's one of those love songs that he done where it starts out and he goes, everybody that re-records it messes it up, and he goes, they're saying the wrong lyrics, and I, gosh, I'll think of it in a minute which one it was. We were on vacation, and it was my obviously my husband, my daughter, and you know when you have an only child, you're always going to take somebody with you. And we're riding along, and thank goodness they were at kind of a young age where I felt like, you know, I wouldn't dare do it now, but I felt like I could sing along. And it was, we had the music going, my dad, my dad, my husband didn't care that the music was up loud. You know, usually he's trying to cut it down, but it was a very popular song by Bruno Mars. 
And I was just singing away. And they busted out laughing. And I realized they were laughing at me. And it was because, leave it to me, I'm singing one thing. The lyrics is actually something totally different. I mean, it was, I I, I can honestly say that that made their night. They laughed and laughed and laughed. And if they only knew, that's just one of many songs that I sing with the wrong lyrics. The only reason I know his name, wasn't he on a uh, Super Bowl halftime one year? I I think that's how I know his name. Yeah. Well, he has a lot of popular songs and a lot of them are really good, but you do need to kind of know the, the, the lyrics before you start singing them, especially if you're going to sing them out in public. Yeah, he make a uh, what's well, I guess you'd say just make fool yourself. Oh, well, I have on several occasions. We just can't help it. I know. But you know, as we go back to the 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 Eagles, well, they were just. I can even remember watching as a kid, heart to heart, and they were talking about the Eagles. The Eagles were just it. That was like well, I mean, the number had, one band. Well, they had hit after, and look at the talent. Yeah. that they had. Just in that group. Standing on a corner in Winslow, Arizona. Such a fine sight to see. There you go. And you probably actually got the lyrics right that time. So we need to write that it, one down. And the interesting thing about that was somebody else was writing the song and he come by and just sat down on the steps and helped him finish it. And I remember hearing the story. They were in a bar one night. Do you remember Lion Eyes? Yeah. They were in a bar and this girl was at it and she turns and walks past him. And he goes, whoa, did you see her Lion Eyes? And then it become a song. It's amazing what can happen and a songwriter be in the room and go home and write a song that becomes such. It, that's really American history almost. Well, and some of them are so talented that when it comes to them, they can literally. I mean, you, there's some things that there's like a documentary with the Beatles where they literally write a song within 45 minutes. And then there are other times that you're trying to write a song and it takes forever. I mean, it yeah. just doesn't come to you. So it's definitely a talent. But I think where you're headed is sometimes we think that the meaning of a song, I mean, if you and I can screw up the lyrics, we sure can screw up the meaning behind a song. Yeah, you know, and a lot of songwriters will say, well, I wrote it and you can interpret it any way that you want to. But there's always a story behind and, all and of that. And that's part of the fascinating piece of it. If there is a cool story behind how they came up with the lyrics yeah. you know and i don't know the story behind this but i'd love to know the story behind they say it was a quick write that uh ronnie wrote it in no time uh sweet home alabama I, it was one of his fastest songs he ever wrote like 20 minutes wow and i mean look, look at what look, it is today yeah now you go back to and the song i was going to bring up by the eagles was hotel california now, I've heard all my life that that dealt with the devil and worshiping the devil and you check in and you can never leave. Have you heard that? I've heard that because it's like, yeah, because of the lyrics. I mean, they it makes stab you, it with their stealing, stealing and you, knife. And you know what? And that they was? just can't kill the, the, the beast. beast. Yeah. That line, he says, was a tribute to uh, uh, Neely Dan. What's that guy's name? It's by Steely Dan and the the singer. For Steely Dan, Steely Dan being a group, is Donald Fagan. Yeah, I wouldn't have known that. Well, I did. And there, the reason is because I made a bet that uh, Steely Dan sang a certain song because I was a Steely Dan fan at the time. And come to find out, Donald Fagan actually went out on his own and had several hit songs. He sounded like the group, but it was like, it'd be like Michael McDonald leaving the Doobie Brothers and me saying that's the Doobie Brothers when, and indeed, it's Michael McDonald. You want me to admit that I don't know who that oh, is Oh, you got to know the Doobie Brothers. Oh, I, my I really gosh. thought at first you were talking about the Blues Brothers. I, no, I, they went I, through my oh, head, but I, oh, no, Scotty, I don't know them. Oh, my Lord. we got we got to have another podcast on music. See, I'm going to have to lean on you on that side of the music because I don't know that Ram as well. The song was, and you go to into this, and I had all these thoughts of what that song meant all these years. On a dark desert highway, cool wind in my hair. It had nothing to do with it. He said they were just some country boys, and that was their take on what L.A. was like, the excess money and things that were wasted in L.A. That was their take on it. Now, does that really make sense? It doesn't to me, but, but I guess it makes perfect sense to them. That's what they said. I, I, I never would have in a million years come up with that. But they came from the Midwest. Yeah. If you'd never been to California before, how would you know? So... From their perspective, that's what they thought California 
was. So let's take a vote. I think my interpretation of the song is better than the way they wrote it. So let's go with my version of what I thought it meant instead of theirs. Okay. All right. <laughs> so what else have we got that we wouldn't know? All right. Let's go with this song because never, Terry, in a million years, would I, and I still don't associate it. I, maybe I need to look up all the lyrics and just sit down with a magnifying glass and study it. But do you remember uh, the song Total Eclipse of the Heart? I do. Wasn't that in a movie, too? I'm not sure. Bonnie Tyler did. I would, I'm almost willing to bet that it was in a, in a soundtrack to something. I want to say that you're right. I don't remember what movie. I mean, I know it was a popular song. I right. can remember singing it. And I know it came out in about, what, 1990s? Somewhere around in there. But the writer of the song has just really destroyed my whole thinking of it. He's got to be weird or maybe on drugs. That, that's all I can say. It doesn't add well, up to me here. Both of them are possibilities. Let's see. It says the total eclipse was originally titled "Vampires in Love." Really? Now, do you? I can't even hear that in my head. It says if anyone listens to the lyrics, they really like vampire lines. It's all about the darkness, the power of darkness, and love's place in the dark. The composer told uh, Playbill in two thousand two. So we we'll have to go back and listen. I, I don't hear that. Again, that's probably because the only line that we know, even though we really enjoy the song, is Total Eclipse of the Heart. I mean, I don't know any of the lyrics of it. Do you? Once in my life, I was yada, 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 and yada, yada, yada. Well, there's a lot of yada, yada in the between, and it does sound like that that's one that makes you scratch your head. I mean, some of these you have, you totally get it, like a country song, Scotty. Oh, yeah. If you listen to a, the lyrics of a country song, would you say it's safe to say, knowing your background is that, and you have years and years of knowledge and experience with that, would you say most of the lyrics are not surprising? Uh, yeah, but really. And, like, you go back to the movie they made about Hank Williams. At the beginning of the movie, Hank comes to town. And him and Audrey goes into Fred Rose's office. And he goes, how do I know that you're, you're not a fake? And he goes, I'm going to leave you a scenario and I'm going to walk out. And he said, when I come back, it ain't got to be anything special. He said, you're walking down the street. You pass no girlfriend. Write a song about that. And then he comes back and Hank has written, today I passed you on the street. And my heart fell at your feet. I can't help it. I'm still in love with you. And wow, did that really happen? That's the story they tell. Now, the truth is, and you've probably even sang this in church. Of and you'd never a uh, guy uh, an airport light. Hank is nineteen forty eight, forty seven, somewhere around in there. And Hank tells a story that he didn't actually write the song. He just held a pen and God wrote the song. But his mother, before Audrey was involved, used to drive Hank to all of his dates uh -huh. so, so he could sing. Uh -huh. And he's coming into Mobile, Alabama, and Hank's drunk in the back seat. Half lit, he leans up across the seat, and the airport light goes past him. He goes, whoo, I saw the light. And he falls back down asleep. And he wakes up the next morning, and he writes, I saw the light. Wow. From that. And that's a true story, supposedly, of how it all went down with Hank. Wow. That is cool. Now, see, I know that kind of stuff. I get lost on... Uh, Steely Dan and the Doobie yeah. Brothers. Yeah. I'm trying, though. Well, I mean, that's... It depends on what your genres are. I, I like a diverse group. Now, do I know the lyrics to it? Obviously, I've already told on myself I don't. But I do think it's fascinating when you do have cool songs that you've enjoyed for year after year after year. And sometimes when you find out there's mystery to what it actually means, you're pleasantly surprised. And then there are times when you're like, I don't get it. Yeah, it, it, here's one, Brian Adams. Now, I used to like him until I found out some of his politics, and I ain't as happy about him anymore, but that's okay. Summer of 69 was a great song. Yeah, was it I, not? Well, I think that's one, a song that most people have heard, because I think it's probably been played for years. Yeah. You know what that's really about? So, the summer of 1969? No, it's about Whoopi. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. So that just really blows my, it was the summer of 69, some guys and me. My boy, boy. Well, I think that's a, that's a clever had to be way, a, Dever, a clever a, way of kind of camouflaging what the meaning was behind the song. 
the next song that I want to ask you about, he done a big Super Bowl ad last year, and then they had to take it off because, well, oops, he was DUI. Born in the USA, Bruce Springsteen. He was a, he got a DUI. Yep. Oh wow. On a motorcycle, and uh, he said he had one beer back and forth, but they pulled the ad there for a little while. But you're talking about the song "Born, Born in, in the USA. USA." I mean, we've been singing that for years. It's almost like it's a a national anthem, and I don't mean anybody to get no you disrespect. Know, yeah, no mean. disrespect, and I don't want anybody to get riled up because I'm saying that. But I'm just saying that any kind of USA, any kind of uh, July Fourth, any kind of holiday like that, you typically it wouldn't be uncommon to hear that played on. The radio or, you know, like. Somebody was always screaming it at a party. Boom. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and it was. What do you think the song's about? Just about being proud to be a U.S. citizen? I would have thought that until I read behind the lyrics of what it meant. And, and you know, and he wrote Blinded by the, right, the Light. I didn't realize that. Yeah. But it goes on. It was how America was looking down upon the Vietnam veteran. And I, I, I never got that from the song. And maybe, I guess what he's meaning is... Uh, you know, you go back to the movie Rambo. That's what that was about, how America looked down upon the... the and the, they did. The Vietnam. And they, they did. were spit on and done up. Yeah, I mean, here they served their country, and I think that's probably why he labeled it Born in the USA, is to remind people. I, they I, were born in the USA, just like a lot of people that were uh, are defensive of those that went off and served in Vietnam. I guess I need to go back and re-listen to the song and try to, with that in mind, now listen to it and see if it changes the way that I interpret it. Yeah, there's a lot of them that we think one way and it actually means something totally different. All right, let's move on to the next one. And I only recognize this one because you hummed a part of it to us before we got started on this. You don't recognize In the Air Tonight? If you said that title, I'd stare at you. But after you, I can feel it coming. And then it dawned on me what you were talking about. Who sings that one, Scott? That'd be the Romance in the Stone soundtrack guy, Phil Collins. Yay! He got it. Have you ever heard the like the folklore or, or the story behind that? I was told I have by no somebody clue. who was told by somebody who was told by somebody that in that song, and I can't remember the lyric, is insinuating that. He witnessed someone drowning. Okay. And when they've talked to Phil Collins and asked about that, he's like, no, I don't understand how that was perceived that way. That was not the intent of the song. But that has, I guarantee you, there are people out there in our listening audience right now that have been told that same story. And I used to listen to that going, oh my gosh, go back and listen to that song because it really, if you listen to it and you've been told that it's about you've witnessed someone drowning, you really do believe that's what happened in that song. But it but has that's nothing not to do with the, it. No, but the lyrics are totally something different. Huh. Interesting there. But I mean, I've been told that for my, that's been... 25 years. You know, like when I listen to Conway and Loretta, and I go back on that old classic they had, you're the reason that our kids are ugly. I knew exactly what they meant by that. <laughs> Is there really a lyric? <laughs> yeah, the, honest to God, that was a song. And you're the reason our kids are ugly. It was a, two, a husband and wife arguing. You know, there are game shows where the the title of the song, country song, is so absurd that they come up with absurd names and they go, is this truth or i mean is this is this a honest to goodness title or is this a made-up one right and honestly it's a 50 50 you know and i have to give kudos to charlie robinson a big texas country singer in the title of his song and it, it is really good stuff there you're not the best but you're the best that i can do and he <laughs> says let's honestly twist a title yeah, oh yeah and he says let's twist another lid and hope that our kids look more like me than they do you Oh my goodness! He said, "Now, nah, ugly he's girl, will leave you." The lady, oh no, is he? no, not a bit there. But she's the best that he can do. Well, it's not saying a lot for him either. <laughs> but I love that one. Let's move on to another song here. Now, you're probably going to go with a different version on this song than me. I'm going to go Eric Clapton because that's what I remember. I shot the sheriff, it, but I did not mean to shoot the deputy. Bob Marley. See, and reggae. Ooh, I love Bob Marley. He's got the 
the hair that, yeah, yeah he's he didn't been wash dead his hair for a long time um uh, i think he died of cancer uh i think his son actually is singing he's got a lot of hits that you would rec- well let me back up that others would recognize uh not necessarily you scotty but he does have some good songs. I am unique, aren't I? Yes. Well, I mean, if it's the genre is country, you got it. I'm all over it. You are. You're all over it. But Old I, country. Yeah, I know all that. Anything through about 2000, I'm really good at. After that, it went south for me, so to speak. But but what's the deal with that one? Well, I thought it was I Shot the Share. Well, that was what I would think. To, that's another song that I remember growing up as a kid and singing. Yeah. I can remember, you know, but it's all Eric Clapton to me, but I remember doing that, But I, and it just went on. But I thought it was all about shooting a sheriff and running. No, it's about a doctor that gave his wife birth control pills, Bob Marley, who wrote it, and he goes out and he kills the doctor. Now, that don't even, to me doesn't even make sense. So I'm looking at the lyric right now, and I'm going, I get it. The lyric is, and I quote, every time I plant a seed, he said, kill it before it grows. Okay. Me, that still wouldn't make a clue for me. Well, now that you told me that the doctor had prescribed birth control to his wife or girlfriend or whoever it was, and you ha- then you read that lyric, it makes perfect sense. Well, if that made a video. I mean, he's camouflaged who the real person is by yeah. saying, I shot the sheriff. But really, it does make you go, oh, I get it, because he's talking about what he had done was keep the seed from growing, like right. he says, and having a child. Yeah. Please don't tell me there's a different meaning to the night the lights went out in Georgia, because I got this visual of they... <laughs> Well, that one to me is it tells the story. Boy, that better was than a, anything. That I mean, was that, a good song. Wasn't oh, that, it? that is a good song. I like the that night one. that hung an innocent man. As we come to a close of this, let's go back on this uh, of a guy. Do you remember the the movie A Star Is Born? I do. And of course, Chris Christopherson was the leading man in that. He was. Did you know that he almost didn't get the part? No. Take a wild guess who it was going to be. And you hear about this all the time where somebody got the part and somebody else passed up on it. And they're like, man, how did I ever pass up on this? Yeah, it ended up being the biggest hit ever. Yeah. Um, I have no idea. Elvis Presley. Really? Elvis was cast to do it. And, of course, there's always the this is why. Colonel Tom Parker demanded a million dollars. Plus, he wanted X amount of royal- royalties of the movie. And they just couldn't negotiate. Uh, the colonel was one of those hardcore dealers of this is what we're getting or we don't do it. And let me make sure I understand. The colonel was Elvis's manager. Yeah, Colonel Tom Parker. Okay. Now, after Elvis passed away, we find out so much more about the colonel who was really, and Elvis knew it, but did nothing of it because he respected him. He was getting 50% of everything Elvis made. He does a show. The colonel got just as much as Elvis did. And you saw what how much that Elvis is had. unreal. And he was a gambler, uh, Tom Parker was. He'd go blow the money that he made from Elvis. Well, I guess he could afford to if he was getting half of Elvis's proceeds. Oh, he got even worse than that. Any likeness, you remember the Love Me Tender when that was huge when yeah. Elvis was here? Yeah. All the dolls, anything that had Elvis's likeness on it, he got 100% of it. He was doing that to Elvis. But Elvis would not argue with him. He felt as though he owed his entire career to the colonel of making him somebody that he wasn't. And he wouldn't be there without him, so he felt like he owed him the 50%. Well, that Whoa. tells you the integrity that Elvis Presley had. I mean, yeah. we all kind of idolize Elvis Presley. Yeah. And I'm not saying that, you know, that he was the the king of, you know, there's debate on who started, you know, that type of music, that, that type of genre. I'm going with Elvis. But his... But I, I think that that speaks a lot to his integrity of what he did for somebody that was getting half of what he was doing. I mean, he brought the talent. And I know I'm getting a little off subject here, but I have to defend the king here for a moment. Elvis had a zero, zero tolerance about drugs. If he caught you and you worked for him smoking marijuana, doing drugs, he fired you immediately. There was no if, ands, or buts. He got rid of you. And, of course, Elvis would die from an overdose. And you go, well, how, how could that happen? 
Elvis thought that if the doctor gave it to him, a prescribed pill from that the was pharmacy, different. it was different. That it was okay. He had, and it was innocent. He just had no clue that it could kill you. You know what I think we need to do, Scotty? What's that? If Colonel Parker was getting 50% of his royalties, it makes you wonder, was there hidden meaning to any of Elvis's songs? See, we may need to go into that one day. But, you know, Elvis never wrote any of his songs. They were all written by somebody else. I didn't know that. Yeah, he never wrote one single song. I still say. From Hound Dog all the way back. I still say. That if I was giving fifty percent of my royalties to somebody else, whether I was writing those songs or not, I would tell somebody that this is really the meaning behind this song. Yeah, and as we go back and tying this in, and I mentioned Chris Christopherson during the seventies, Chris Christopherson was the heartthrob of America. Oh yeah, I mean the you know he biggest, had the shirts with the yeah, the biggest songwriter that existed. How did he get his start? He has this. He writes this song, and he thinks I've got something good here, and nobody will listen to him. So he takes his last dollar and goes and rents a, a helicopter. He flies it to Johnny Cash's front yard, gets off of it, walks to the front door, and says, "John, I've got a song that you've got to hear." And of course, that song was "Sunday Morning Coming Down," and that's how he got his start. Really? Now his biggest song, and he wrote many of them. Of course, he went on after the "A Star Is Born," and he done "Convoy." You remember the movie Convoy? Yeah. That was huge, and I can't remember the girl that was in the movie. But of all the songs, Help Me Make It Through the Night, that Chris wrote, the biggest song that's ever been recorded by him was uh, Why Me Lord. And Chris tells the story of he was doing a lot of bad things, and somebody invited him to church. And he said he was sitting there, and he said it was the most uncontrollable thing. He said it wasn't like I was even moving. He said the preacher asked, is there anybody here that's done wrong that you sinned? And he goes, my hand goes up. And he goes, do you need to repent? And he said, the next thing I know, I'm walking. And he says, I get down to the altar and I'm going, why me, Lord? Why have I got all these things in life? Why do I deserve them? Why me, Lord? And that's how the song came about. That is pretty darn cool, Scotty. I liked it. So, I mean, at least you can say you're a great storyteller and you can pull that out of that brain of yours. I mean, you really do. You have a... a, a a way of pulling out all of that fascinating stuff that we wouldn't have the opportunity to know about unless we just happened to read up on it. It just might be you need a little brushing up on the Doobie Brothers and Steely Dan. <laughs> it's the Blues Brothers. Terry's right. I don't know a lot about rock and roll and the meaning behind a lot of songs in it, or maybe even the easy listening. It took me years to figure out that Puff the Magic Dragon, well, it wasn't a story to kids. Makes me almost blush to know what it's about. I grew up in a rural area, well, where you learn things a little bit quicker, I guess. When Hank Jr. sang Country Boy Can Survive, I left to spit some beech nut in that dude's eye. Well, I knew exactly what he meant. I knew exactly what Randy Travis sang about when he sang Three Wooden Crosses. And we'll have to do a whole episode one day on the saddest song that there is in the world. But if you want to hear one of the best, look up Daryl Singletary in the note. It's all about a guy that gets his heart broke. She leaves him a note instead of telling him, and his heart is broken by the hand that held the pen that wrote the words that broke the heart of the only one that really loves her. Whew, it was strong. And well... And I know a lot of people think Lionel Richie is the greatest when it comes to love songs. But don't overlook Conway. I still remember Conway painting a picture. He's in a bar. And there's a woman that's eyeing him. And Conway goes on to explain that he knows she's not going to fall for any of his lines. He sees a wedding band on her hand. But you know what he does see? He sees the want to in her eye. And I guess I'd have to close out with one of Conway's greatest. I may never get to heaven, but I once came mighty close. Boy, that ain't a love song. I hope you enjoyed this week, picked up on a song or two, learned something. Thanks for dropping by, and we'll see you next week here at Secrets from the South.